Hey, everybody. We are checking out Studio One version five still going through some of the basics and things that are really great for radio imaging, radio production. And one of those things that is really popular in radio production is using in Pro Tools. It's called Audio Suite in Adobe Audition. If you go to the edit view, you know how you can directly apply plugins and effects to individual pieces of audio. Studio One has that, and it's actually a little bit more user friendly. And I'll kind of explain there's there's two ways to do it. And the first way is definitely going to be the most popular. This is called event effects. So I'm just going to show you right here. I've got a artist drop, um, which is Lady Gaga. She's just saying, hey, it's Lady Gaga. Hey, hey, this is Lady Gaga. And I've loaded it up into my imaging template. Now, I could obviously add a whole bunch of effects to the track. I could bus it to a VO track and do a whole lot of real-time processing and just basically leave this file untouched. But for every plugin that you're using, it's going to take up CPU. And if you are doing a bunch of effects only once in your session, but you've got a really big session, you're loading up these plugins and either you're automating them so that they turn on and off when you want them to. It's just a lot of work. And why? Why would you spend all that time when you have an option? And you actually have two really good options. So the first one, like I said, is event effects. So, for instance, this Lady Gaga drop, I want to add a high pass filter to it. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here and I'll just close that so everybody knows where I'm going. If you go down here to the bottom right, you hit the browse button and you're going to see all of your plugins load up as long as you're on the effects tab. So, as you can see, I've got a whole bunch of third party plugins as well as the default ones that Personas includes. I'm going to go into Waves. I like the REQ, that's kind of my go to filter EQ. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag it. But as you can notice, when I drag it, it tries to apply it to the entire track. So, you're seeing it says Add Effects on Channel VO Flat One, which that's what my track name is. The way to apply it directly to the clip versus the track is on a Mac, you just hold the option key. Okay. When you hold the option key, you'll notice when I drag it onto a clip, that clip turns green. That basically tells you this is where we're going to put this effect. So I put it there. Boom. Now you've got this plugin applied directly to that clip. Now what you can do is you can load up one of your presets here. So we'll choose my telephone EQ. All right, there it is. Great. You can close that. You can leave it. Um, if you want to edit it, you can open it up again. Now it's still using CPU power with REQ. It's one of those plugins that's not going to use a whole lot of CPU power. But obviously, if you're doing this multiple times in a session, you're kind of doubling up, tripling up on this plugin. Or in the case of more CPU intensive plugins like AudioEase, um, speakerphone, that one has a lot of emulations and it takes up quite a bit of CPU. That's one of those that you don't want to leave running all the time. So once you've tuned it and once you've dialed in the sound, you want to apply that. And in Audio Suite, that's what a lot of people do. They apply it directly to the clip. It creates a new clip. And it's kind of destructive editing, but it's not. That's what event effects are. But event effects are nice in the fact that I've perfected my EQ. I'm really happy with the way it sounds. Hey, hey, this is Lady Gaga. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to close this. Okay. And then if you look down here where my mouse is, you will see there's the name of the clip, Lady Gaga, and you'll see this event effects. Now, if you hit this little triangle, it's going to give you your chain, which right now there is REQ6 stereo. 
if you want, you can add three, four, five plugins to that. You can even add entire chains. Um, you can see I've got some mic chains there. You can add entire chains to one clip. Now, the nice thing is, is this little render button. That's going to apply the effect destructively. It's going to tell this, we're done using this plugin. We don't need it anymore. We're going to apply this to the clip destructively. And there it is. So you're going to see, I will click this render. Now it's rendered to the file. All right. Now, if I undo that, you will also see here this section that says tail. That's perfect for reverbs, delays, all of those things that have trailing effects. Obviously, if you have a zero second tail and you have a reverb, your reverb's going to get cut off. Now, if you apply the reverb and then you say add a six second tail and hit render, it's going to render out six seconds of that audio. So you will allow that reverb trail to fade out, essentially. Same with a delay. We don't need that. This is just an EQ. I'm going to change it back to zero. Hit render. There it is. Not using any more CPU. You can see right here, there's still the little effects icon. So that's saying, hey, I've put this effect on this clip and we've applied this event effect. Now, say I'm, I'm down the road in my session. I don't like that telephone EQ anymore. I just, it doesn't fit with the mix. I need to change it. The easiest thing about event effects is you can highlight the clip and go right back to where you would render the clip and you can hit restore. When you do that, boom, brings back the original file. It has restored the preset that you used and you can change it. So now I'm going to change it to a different high pass filter and re-render it. And there you go. Now, you can do this as many times as you want. That's a nice thing about event effects. It's destructive editing, but it also gives you the ability to go back and change it, which is something that both Adobe Audition and Pro Tools have yet to offer on the clip level. I think in Adobe Audition, you can actually apply effects to the clips, but you can't render that to the clip and then undo it. Studio One gives you a lot of flexibility with event effects. So, event effects are your best friend. The other thing that you can do is use macros, and these take a lot of time to set up. I'm gonna go ahead and remove that plugin so we're back at square one. Macros are, think of in Adobe Audition terms like scripts or favorites where you can set up a chain of events and apply them with one click. So I've got my macro toolbar here already open. If you don't, it's going to be this little icon right up here next to the queue. Click that, macros, and you're going to get something that looks similar to this. Mine I've obviously changed a little bit and it will vary depending on the user and if you've already set up some macros. One of the things that I like to do, I like to have my VO chains here so that I'm not taking up the processing power of a VO bus. I could do that, but a lot of times I have specific chains for specific voices and there is really no reason for me to bus each individual voice. It's just overkill. I know the the chain that I want on those voices, I apply them directly. So for instance, I'm going to use this in a piece of imaging. Hit my imaging VO. There it goes. Processed. It's all ready to go. Now the other thing is I can rename the event. So we can say Lady Gaga Imaging Processed. Rename them. That's another macro. And macros are really cool because you get um, to do everything that you would do with event effects, but you get to do it in one click. And so the way that you would edit these is 
You go over here to this little gear. Hit that. Hit macro organizer. These are going to be all of your macros. Okay, if I want to create one, say I want to create a macro for that telephone filter. Now, the first thing I would need to do is make sure that that telephone filter is saved as a preset. So we'll go here. We'll open that REQ and we'll choose Telephone EQ. Okay. Now you can save it as a preset with waves, but in order for macros to work, you also need to save that in your Studio One settings. So if you hit this little note tab here, store preset, and you can label the preset. So we're going to call this REQ Telephone. EQ. Okay. There it is. And it's a Studio One preset. So now I can close that and go right back to this little gear. Choose Macro Organizer. It brings it back up. Now we're going to hit New. All right. What we're going to do is we are going to apply an event effect. So we'll just go ahead and search Event Effects. And you can see right here it says Insert Event Effects. Hit add, and then if we go in here, we can choose the device, which is going to be the REQ6 Stereo, all right? And the preset is REQ Telephone EQ. Now, if it's a delay, obviously you want to add a tail. The tail would be six to eight to 10 seconds, depending on if it's a reverb or a delay. Since this is an EQ, again, we don't need the tail, so we'll just leave that at zero. Once we're happy with that, we've chosen the device, we've chosen the telephone EQ, we hit OK. Now the next thing we need to do is we need to tell it to apply that and bounce it. So we search Bounce, choose Bounce Selection, and hit Add. Now we'll go ahead and title this. Telephone EQ. Go ahead and put this in Gavin. We'll hit OK. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go up here and we can choose to add another button. So we'll add it right here after beat delay. So if I right click on the beat delay, I can hit new button. OK, it's going to give me a new button here. Now right click on that new button and you can assign it to a macro and that's where we look for the REQ telephone EQ. Now if there's one thing about Studio One that they could improve it's this because this organization here is a little rough to go through to find your preset that you created. So bear with me while I find it. Telephone EQ. Okay. Yep. All right. So I just wanted to double check, make sure there wasn't a Personas template that also was called Telephone EQ. This is the one that we just created. So here's what's nice. Now I highlight that clip, hit Telephone EQ, and it's going to tell me that the, the volume was above what it normally is. That happens. That's okay. There you go. Now obviously that's something we can fix by lowering the clip, you know the clip volume, then applying it, then we don't get that error. So that's macros. They are a little bit more complicated than event effects, but they allow you to do a whole lot. Um, another thing that you can do is do entire voice chains as a macro. And that essentially is just loading up a chain over here and saving that chain. So we could save this as a chain, store effects chain and label it, and then you can also create a macro for a full effects chain. That's how 
you can get around CPU errors when you're using a plugin sparingly throughout your session. Obviously, if you're using a high pass filter all the time in your session, it's easier just to have that on a track. But in the case of speakerphone or certain delays or certain other effects, perfect, perfect for event effects. Hope that helps.